Virtuoso jazz bassist Christian McBride's legendary career has taken him from the halls of Juilliard to the stage with some of the biggest names in music. He's considered by many to be the bridge between old school jazz and the next generation of great players. And tonight, he is Fox 5's modern master. <laughs> My name is Christian McBride, and I am a bassist. It's just about letting the energy and, and the spirit flow. When I was eight years old, I saw my father play. For some particular reason, this one concert, uh, it really struck me, and I turned to my mother and I said, uh, can I have a bass for Christmas, uh, a bass guitar? My first electric bass is still in Philly. I, I never brought it to New York with me. The minute I touched the instrument, I knew that's what I wanted to do. That's actually one of the pieces I used to get into Juilliard. The bass jury was sitting there watching me like this. Just deadpan, no nothing. Didn't know if I was doing good, good or, or bad. The great saxophonist Bobby Watson, uh, maybe two weeks into the school year, he, uh, he found his way into school and he said, hey, what you doing this weekend? I went, I went why? He said, you know, because I got a gig for you this weekend. You know, we're playing at Birdland. I was like, what? I decided to leave Juilliard after one year. I don't regret it because I had a chance to play with some real legends who are, who are no longer with us. Betty Carter, Ray Brown, the late great George Duke, who was a giant influence on me, uh, not just as a musician, but as a person as well. As a young jazz musician, uh, you are expected to know a number of songs from the Great American Songbook. So, I've been in Freddie Hubbard's band for a year and a half. Then Freddie says, hey, we're going to make a live album. I went, like, yes, you know, I'm going to be documented with Freddie Hubbard. So we're recording, tapes are rolling, crowd is packed. Freddie starts playing this, this uh, trumpet intro. I don't recognize what he's playing. And right away, I, I, I think I turned white. Since Freddie's back was to me, I took the microphone that was in front of the bass, and I kind of made it drop out of the way so it wouldn't record, <laughs> it wouldn't get the sound of the bass. At the end of the night, the assistant engineer comes down, he says, you know what? We had a shadow mic on the bass, so we were able to salvage the track. <laughs> and I'm going, no! So yes, on Freddie Hubbard's Live at Fat Tuesdays is a rendition of But Beautiful with me playing all the wrong notes to be documented forever. <laughs> Everything that you, you learn as a trained musician, you have to call on all of those skills to be a jazz musician, and you have to make it all sound simple so the untrained ear can understand it. As a bass player, you are supposed to come up with different creative bass lines every single course. It could be like this, you know. Or I could start it off like this. Or I could start it off like this. Now, when you switch it to the pop side, the discipline is almost the exact opposite. If I may reference my dear friend Sting, we play every breath you take. This is the bass line. I have to keep, I have to play that exactly like that. You know, it's no, none of this, you know. I could play that, but it would get in the way and it would, it would really break up the flow of how that song is supposed to feel. 
James Brown has always been my biggest musical influence. I produced what turned out to be his final show at the Hollywood Bowl. He said, uh, son, I'm proud of you. I was like, oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Brown. He said, no, 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 I mean, you're really doing some good things, son. I've been following your career. You're doing a lot of good things. You ain't just playing bass. You're upholding the standard. I went, whoa. <laughs> it's sort of a natural inclination to, to want to nurture these younger musicians and help them the same way the older guys helped us. So it's all, it's all full circle.